is your first time visiting, either here in person or virtually, you, and you are wondering who we are. Well, let me tell you who we are. We are ordinary people serving an incredible God, and we are on this journey together trying to get closer to God. Our motto is, we are a church that is word-fed and spirit-led. We want to welcome you today to True Vine Church Worship Service. If you are a returning friend, we celebrate you. If you are a disciple of True Vine, we honor you. If you are listening to us via Facebook, please put a comment in the comment box. Tell us who you are and what city or state you are in. Like and share our page. Let's center ourselves and prepare for a move of God in our worship service. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going to have our call to worship. Zechariah 9 and 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud. O daughter of Jerusalem, lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Our litany is from Psalms 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Worshippers, let Israel say, his love endures forever and all who fear God say his love endures forever worshipers Hosanna to God Hosanna in the highest with the Lord on our side what can we fear what can humankind do to us worshipers Hosanna to God we shall triumph over those who surround us and stand in confidence in the Lord our God. Worshippers, Hosanna to God, Hosanna in the highest. The Lord is our strength and our might. The Lord has become our salvation. Worshippers, Hosanna to God, Hosanna in the highest. God on Palm Sunday, we are going to do the Hosanna song that we haven't been able to do as a family in a while. So I pray that if you haven't heard it, it's really easy to catch, I promise, okay? Hiya. 
sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Let's do that again. Lord, I lift your name on high.
where it says worshipers. Humble and riding on a donkey. Acclaimed by crowds and carol by children. Moving from the peace of the countryside to the corridors of power. You are given the beast of burden. You are given majesty. A new face. You are given those who long for redemption. A new song to sing. With them, with hearts and voices, we shout. Hosanna! Blessed is the one who in the name of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Facebook family. Test. This morning we'll be reading the Holy Scripture reading dialogue, Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion, Matthew 26 and 14 through 2766. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, what are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, where do you want us to prepare, you, prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says my appointed time draws near. In your house, I shall receive, I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at a table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Amen. I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for him if that man had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread said the blessing, broke it, and giving it to his disciples said, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you from now on, 
I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you, with you new in the kingdom of my father. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch for me for one hour? Watch and pray, that is, that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let's go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the 12, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged, arranged a sign with them, saying, the, the man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi, and he kissed him. And Jesus answered him, Friend, do you want, do what you have come for? Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of the 12 who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and stuck the high, struck the high priest servant cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into his sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my father and he will not provide me at this moment with more than 12 legions of angels? But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said the word to the crowds, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day, I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Thank you. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. This morning we come to give thanks unto God. And if you, if you're looking for continued blessings, you have to give something in order to receive. So right now, I'm asking you to be able to, to have this house to continue to grow and to feed this community and to do outreach. We're asking you to dig deeps in your pockets 
and to give because to who is to who much is given much is expected so god has given us this blessing of the holy spirit and it's for us to go out and preach and teach and to be able to go out and do those things to keep the lights on to keep the air going the summer is coming we know how that is we know how it feels to have no ac but we still worship nonetheless we know what it felt like when the heat went out but we still worship nonetheless so Thank you for your continued faithfulness. And I'm asking you to be even more faithful on, on today, on Sunday. You can, on our Facebook page, there is a learn more button that you can press where you can also give. There's also our Facebook page, um, our cash app, and you can also text 54255. 54244 and press um, TBC to be able to get the link to, uh, to, to give offering today. Amen. And we also take regular, we take cash and we take checks. We like the one that falls, but the one that jingles, yeah, you can give that too. But that check, like Dr. Piper would say, M is spelled with millions. T is spelled with thousands. We like the H for hundreds, but we want to get to that M right there so that we can even seed even more into, <laughs> in, into this work. Also, if, if you have not heard, we are praying that God expands this work even more to extend into True Vine Elevation Academy. If you're looking for a Christian school that is word fed to your children and spirit led and also the Texas uh, curriculum, you can get that at our school. So just dig deep today and keep on blessing. And if you want your pockets to be filled, you have to first give on to the Lord because he is the one that blessed you with that blessing. Amen. Amen. Can we just get some offer music? Thank you. Father God, we ask that you bless today's offering tenfold, no, a hundredfold, for the furtherance of your kingdom work. Bless those that could give and those that couldn't. All this we ask in thy precious son, Jesus' name. Amen. My needs are met. My needs are met. I'm, out I'm out of debt. I have more in store, have more in store. For, the kingdom of God. for the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Before Pastor Sheila comes with the introduction, there's a testimony I want you all to hear. She started giving it, but we were so deep in worship, I think we missed it. And uh, I'm just let you tell it. Praise the Lord, True Vine. Um, so, as y'all know, I am a full time student. I do not work. I have made that very clear a couple of times. Um, and this month, um, I was really, really scared. I'm gonna just be very honest. I was very, very, very scared that I was not gonna be able to play, be able to pay my rent and my car payment um, because funds were really just, you know, a little on the short side. Um, and I had tried multiple times to do a loan online, uh, go to my bank, but you know how banks are now because of COVID, you have to schedule appointments because no one's actually like available. Um, and I know I needed a co-signer, so I was like, I called my baby sister, cause you know, Tanya, she a big dog. Um, and so I was like, hey, I'm coming to Houston, but I'm coming to celebrate you, but we gotta take care of business first. So Tanya and I had scheduled an appointment for Saturday morning. They double booked us. 
I was a little bit upset, but they found a way to get us to an appointment for a later time that day. We get there and it's for the wrong appointment. I was like, I'm not here for this. I'm here for that. Well, we can't help you. We close in 30 minutes. What you need takes at least an hour or so to get done. So I called, no, I had Tanya call because I was really upset. I was really upset and I couldn't talk because the Lord is still working on my mouth. So I have learned to be quiet when I'm angry. And so Tanya was talking. I said, Tanya, just tell mom to pray. Like, I can't, I can't pray for myself right now, but tell mom to pray. And so I heard God say, you're not supposed to get the loan. And I was like, so how am I going to pay my rent, Jesus, if I'm not supposed to get this loan? Um, and so I just kept hearing God say, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it. And I was trying to find ways to get this loan. I talked to my parents. My sisters came up with a beautiful plan. Um, rent got paid, praise the Lord. However, I went to my school and I was like, is there a way that I can still pull for more funds? Cause I got to figure out how I'm going to pay for, for May, June, July. Like I'm not working. And they was like, well, you pretty much depleted what you needed. And I was like, okay. So then I found another way to help students. It's a different loan. Um, I had previously applied for that loan back in November and the school denied it because they said I had the plan, so I didn't need to go that way. So then I reached back to them. They told me to call the school. So I called the school after I already just talked to them, told them what they said. They said, look, make a request for this amount. So I made a request that day and I prayed. I told mom, I said, for some reason, I'm at peace. I'm not sure why, but I just feel like I'm at peace right now. So then the next day I get the approval letter. I was like, okay, great. We're, we're all right. We're all right. Um, so I go and talk to them and I was like, okay, so how much am I going to get? So that kind of get an idea for, you know, the summer. So I have to figure out at least May, you know, um, they was like, well, that's in the business office hands now, but it looks to be about this amount. And so I was like, okay, well, that, that'll come like two months rent. Praise the Lord. When am I getting it? <laughs> when, when am I getting it? So um, I was, I had prayed last, that the night before. And I was like, God, you know what? You have yet to fail me. So whatever you do, just happen, let it happen fast, Lord. Just let it happen fast. So I'm in class. I get a letter from an email from the business office. I get a letter from the business office and they are releasing double what they told me. The amount that they are releasing covers 10 months of rent. <laughs> choose to worship God this morning because he was faithful to me because I was faithful to him. I just, I am so grateful. I said a text message to my family. I said, y'all don't understand how grateful I am for your prayers because when you go through, sometimes you can't pray for yourself because you're so frustrated. You're so weighted down. You're so angry, but somebody prayed for me. I don't have a burden of worry. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. To not have to worry, but to be the athletic trainer I have always prayed I could be. So I just wanted to say be faithful, even when you don't know how. Just try Jesus. It's the best decision of your life. Thank you for letting me share. Now, I did the math the other day. That takes uh, almost to graduation. 
a few months short of graduation. And I just figured if he could take her to that point, he gonna take her all the way. Listen, as dad, I wanted to step in so fast and do some things. But God said he got this, so I had to trust God. But the sisters, we all had a plan. <laughs> we had a plan, but God had a better plan. We got a better plan. And, and she texts me, Did you, and you sent me the email that you got. I was like in a meeting. I was like, oh. <laughs> You know when you want to shout, but you can't shout. <laughs> well, you could. You, she was in a. She, she was in a place where she could shout, and I couldn't shout. And then she was in class; she couldn't shout, but we were shouting on the inside. While you're trying to work it out, God done, while you're trying to figure it out, God done work it out. Woo! My, my, my. The faithfulness of God. The old folks used to say, he may not come when you want him, but when he comes, he's always right on time. He, sometimes it seems like he waits for the last minute. I just, have a, I just have a sneak of suspicion the reason why he does that is not for him because he already know what he gonna do it's for us so our faith can increase <sighs> my 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 yeah. okay hey 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 Woo! Listen, listen, if y'all if, if don't see me moving around too much, my back is really killing me right now. But I tell you what, I can still praise him. In my pain. He's awesome. Have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Somebody pray for me. Had me on their mind. Took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed. Okay, I, I know we got a program to move to, but Lord. Somebody pray for me. Had me on their mind. Took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad. take the time to formally maybe if you stand up real quick come over here so people can see you on the camera this Gabe is our latest addition to our music ministry 
So we now have, we went from Mike and Mike to MGM. Grand. Grand. We MGM Grand. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. In case you haven't heard that brother can blow, he can blow. So we are so appreciated and, and thank you, Brother Michael, for bringing him in. Amen. Amen. And we do that because you do what you do. We, we can't ask them, well, we can ask them to pray for free, but, you know, they got to make a living too. So we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, who's up? Sheila, right? Okay. Oh, excuse me. Let me do the right. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. You know, that's why I say you cannot beat God's giving, no matter how hard you try. God said, try me. See, will I open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. Amen. So my job today is to introduce the speaker of the hour. Um, I'm just going to ask everyone to stand, please. 1 Corinthians 1 and 26 through 27 says, Brothers, consider the time of your calling. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly and despised things of the world and the things that are not to nullify the things that are. Drill sergeants teach new recruits every aspect of combat training, which means they have the great responsibility of shaping civilians and to the best soldiers in the world. So it was not by mistake that our Bishop Alexander used to be a drill sergeant in the United States Army. But now, say but now, he's a drill sergeant in the Army of the Lord. have tasked our bishop to let the broken, the lowly, the despised things of the world, those that feel downtrodden, nullified, and weak, know that they are, that we are accepted and included in the plan of God's will. His teaching and preaching teaches us spiritual warfare combat strategies so that we can be the best soldiers for the Lord. Romans 10 and 14 declares, how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? Let us please give honor by, let's praise the Lord and give honor to him for the angel of this house, Bishop Trevor Alexander. Good morning, Sue Ryan. Good morning. For you guys out on Facebook or anyone here who's visiting, I need you to know I am not Trevor <laughs> B. Alexander. <laughs> he will be coming shortly. <laughs> I just came to let, you know, to remind everyone how precious life is, how precious our Lord is. Our Lord gave up everything for us at this time many years ago. So this morning, I'm gonna sing a song that's dedicated to him and it's Precious Lord. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on. 
Let me stand. I am tired. I am weak. I am worn through the storm, through the night. Lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, and lead me home. When my way grows drear, Precious Lord, linger near. When my life is almost gone, hear my cry, hear my call. Hold my hand, lest I fall. Take my hand, precious Lord, and lead me home. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me home. Let me stand, I am tired, I am weak, I am worn through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When the dark darkness appears and the night draws near, and the day is past and gone. At the river I stand, guide my feet, hold my hand, take my hand. Precious Lord, lead me home. Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on. Let me stand. I am tired. I am weak, I am worn through the storm, through the night. Lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord. Lead me home, precious Lord. Take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. 
Take my hand, precious Lord, and lead your child home. Amen. Brother, sing that song. I don't care what nobody say. He sang. He sang. He said, amen. And I want to greet everybody once again who's on our Facebook page. And thank God for my nephew, my favorite nephew in San Antonio, Sean. In this case, he was wondering who he was. He's at home watching. And to my favorite nephew in Texas, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> and to all of you, my God, Father's children, and greet each of you here. This is a, it's been two years since we've been in the physical building since COVID, and it's been a wonderful time. I'm just enjoying myself. It's still it's a Palm Sunday. I'm talking about well, for Palm Sunday. See, this is what happens there, uh, Minister Sylvester, when you mess up. You got 20,000 people that will correct you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Brother Riley. Amen. Amen. I want to thank God for my auntie. She's, she's on, but she didn't, she'll never make no comments. But she makes me know that when I do recognize her, she let me know. So, auntie, I know you're watching. You're my favorite auntie in Texas. Because if I say that, then she's going to call all the other ones. I'll be in trouble. So, and to all of our guests that are here for the first time, glad to see you. And good to see you come back to worship with us. Amen. Y'all ready for the word? Amen. But I can say hi, hi, hi. I see Terry is waiting for it. To my children, my Tara, my Tasha, and my Tanya. You hear what I said? My Tasha, my Tara, and my Tanya. They were perfectly good this week. So they're mine. Well, you're good most of the time, right? Yeah, she's good most of the time. <laughs> and to my beautiful, wonderful wife, the one that makes my liver quiver and my spleen <laughs> squeaky clean. <laughs> hey, he, we don't go, we don't add it in it. It's not just clean, it's squeaky clean. Squeaky clean. <laughs> Brother Joseph, you just add it to my, I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it. Before I forget, next Wednesday, next Wednesday, um, well, this Wednesday, <laughs> this Wednesday coming up for Holy Week, if you are available at 7 p.m., I will be speaking at New Creation Christian Fellowship for their Holy Week celebration. And I would love to see your face in the place. 8700 Four Winds Drive in Windcrest. Love to see you be here. So when I go look out in the, in the crowd, I get some friendly faces. Yeah, watch this. I see some friendly faces. Just in case y'all missed it, Wednesday, we will not have service for True Vine. We will be at 87 Four Winds Drive. I'll be looking for friendly faces. <laughs> All right. Seven o'clock, seven o'clock, seven o'clock. Are y'all ready for the word? Ready. Amen. John chapter 12, verses 12 through 13. I know it's just three or two verses, but it's, it's all been said when Deacon Terry and Deacon Lucy read the scriptures today. This all sums up the whole of Holy Week is in that Passion Scriptures. So, y'all ready? It's a New Testament passage, Jeff. New Testament. John chapter 12, verse 12 says, On the next day, many people that were come into the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him, cry and cried, Hosanna, blessings of the King of Israel that comes in the name of the Lord. That is the word of God for the people of God. People say thanks be unto God. Thanks be you may be seated. Yeah. Uh, this is, I want to talk to us this morning about the essence. Heaven. Are we missing the essence of worship? Mm, my, my, my. Are we missing the essence of worship? As I mentioned, this has been a long time since we've been in the physical building on a Palm Sunday. And I noticed this morning that we were waving our palms and children were having a sword fight with the, with the palms. They were just celebrating in their own way. And I have to admit this being in church this morning on Palm Sunday feels real good. Amen. Uh, as we wave our palms and we were picturing Jesus coming in with his triumphant uh, entrance into Jerusalem. 
I cannot help but ask the question, are we missing the essence of worship? And I say that because I believe if you follow the scriptures as was read today, that thousands of people who line the streets of Jerusalem miss the essence of worship. So my assignment today is really simple, to move us from the formality of worship and move us into not the lip service, but heart service. Amen. All right. As I was preparing this, this, this message, I heard Pastor, Pastor Emeritus David in my head singing. Yeah, y'all know one of his favorite songs. Praise is what I do. Yeah. When I was putting this, I heard him singing. Pastor David, I heard you sing clearly in my head. And I want to, uh, I had to go back and look at the, one of the verses. It says, praise is what I do. I vow to praise you, even though through the good and the bad, I praise you when I'm happy or sad. I praise you in all that I go through because praise is what I do. When we move from lip service to heart service, whatever we go through, the good and the bad is what we are. We are worshipers. If you notice the program today kept saying worshipers, not people. We're always people. But we came into worship. When we adapt this attitude of worship, and not just with our lips, but with our heart, then praise is what we do, Amen. even what we're going through. So in, we, we, we are emerging out of this pandemic. We're not fully out yet, but we are emerging. And we should be coming out stronger, wiser, and better. Uh, I believe that when we come, when we, as we are emerging out, we should be emerging with a stronger desire and a stronger love for God. Because almost a million people has lost their lives. And you're still here. And the question should be, why am I still here? Because we are born for such a time as this. There's something that God wants you to do. And one of the things he wants us to do is to worship him. Not in service, but with heart service. And I say to you this morning that as the Holy Spirit is, is, is moving in this, in this place, he is connecting our hearts to his heart. It's a heart to heart and a breast to breast. Uh, it's good, it's good, it's good. I believe one of the reasons why we miss the essence is we get caught up in the distractions. There's so many distractions going on. I know football season ain't started, thank God, but we got, if the Cowboys are playing, we got Cowboys on our mind. We got Spurs going into the playoffs. We got all this going on, and they're distractions. But when we come to worship, we come to worship in spirit and in truth. Um, have we made worship a convenience and not a lifestyle? All right. All right. Have we made worship a convenience and not a lifestyle? Uh, we, let's see how that works out. So my first point I want to talk about is Jesus' triumphant entrance into Jerusalem. This marks the beginning of Holy Week. This is Jesus' journey to Calvary. This sets in motion God's plan of salvation. Holy Week God's humanity is in full display that would end with his divinity. Okay, y'all missed that. This week, we will see the full humanity of Jesus on display. But it would end with his full divinity in the resurrection. He comes into Jerusalem and the people begin to worship him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel who comes in the name of the Lord. I am sure there were some that worshiped on that day, man, every word that they said. But in a few short days later, some of them, who was worshiping and singing Hosanna. Yeah. Cried out, crucify him. The question is, what happened? Let me tell you what I think happened. They missed the essence of worship. It is my contention that there's some in the body of Christ today that will gather on a Sunday morning 
even on this Sunday, wave our palms, sing Hosanna, Hosanna. But come Monday, not even the end of the week, come Monday, we don't miss the essence of worship. Uh, I think sometimes we are so caught up in the formality. We know this is Palm Sunday and we're supposed to get our palms. And by the way, if you don't pick up a cross, there's a palm cr uh, cross back there. And we have a, a book marker uh, in a, for Palm Sunday. We got some gifts. Right. And those gifts are just a reminder that today is Palm Sunday. But let us not just get caught up in the tradition of Palm Sunday. But get caught up in the heart of Palm Sunday. And in the heart says Jesus came riding on a donkey. Sitting in motion. The plan of salvation for you and I. And, and so we got to move from the formality and capture the essence. And if we are not careful we can and some have reduced worship to just a Sunday morning experience. Uh, we run the risk of reducing worship to a feel good experience. When we feel good of just coming to church. Uh, the danger of having a feel good experience is, is that you can feel so good today, but wake up on Monday, not just as great as the Sunday morning feeling. It will wear off. So you get a transition from a feel good to a hard experience so you can praise God for the good and bad because this is what we do. Right. And I love the, 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 the testimony that Elder Tara gave. She said she was so angry she couldn't pray. That's our humanity. But she called, called somebody who could pray. Uh -huh. That's how we get through it sometimes. And we come and we lose that, that, that feel good expression. So we have to wait till the next Sunday to come back to church to get a recharge. Because we miss the essence of worship. We can worship anytime and in any place. Can I just say this for the sake of the saying here? When you create your home, as your temple. You don't have to wait till Sunday to get recharged. Matter of fact, let me just say this. I get some of the most worship experience driving to work. When, okay, y'all don't know this, but I have a tracker on me. Every time I come to a railroad track, the train comes. I got caught twice in a space of 10 minutes. Going and coming by the train. But I've learned to turn that experience in after I complain. <laughs> oh, the next time we move, we're not going to have no train tracks. I'll tell you that right now. I've got one condition, one condition only no train tracks. Turn that time. And why is it the train is so long? <laughs> Jesus. Okay, y'all just capture my essence right there. <laughs> Yeah. But I've learned to turn that into my worship experience. And if you ever see a guy that's sitting, you driving, you sitting there and you look at a guy that's having a good time in his car and ain't nobody else in there but him, that's me. <laughs> you do it too when your favorite song come on, you get to like your head. I get to clapping. Sometimes I get to crying and there's nothing wrong. I just captured the essence of worship. But let me just say this now, because I got to say this. Thank you for turning your home into a worship. But I believe the Bible said, forsake not to assemble yourself with the saints. So glad that you got a place of worship, but it's also a place of corporate worship. Let, me, let us not get, let us not turn that into a convenience. All right, let me move on. And so in Jerusalem, the people began to worship because they felt good about worship. Uh, but I wonder, did everybody who worshiped fully understood who he was? Huh? Uh, did they know who he is? Were they worshiping because other people were just worshiping? Have you ever, um, do this, do this, do, do this one time. Go to the mall and stand up and just start doing this. Guess what people gonna do? Why? 
because they saw you do it. And I think sometimes people come to a worship experience because they see other people doing it and there is nothing but copycats. Did everybody that worship fully worship because they knew who he was? It is my contention that not everybody that worship knew who Jesus was. They may have heard about Jesus, but they did not know who Jesus was. Uh, you got to know him to capture the essence of worship. Uh, there are moments that must be captured and sometimes can only be captured in worship. Let me tell you that I know that everybody didn't know who Jesus was because First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 8 says, which none of these prince of this world knew for if they had known, they would not have crucified our Lord of glory. So if they had known, they would not have crucified him. That tells me that everybody who cried Hosanna knew who he was. It was nothing but lip service. And so Jesus comes in. They get to worship him. Can I tell you the next point here? Right. That Jesus is a provocateur. All right. Yeah. Okay, I know that's not a biblical term. You won't find it in the Bible. Um, on my job, I'm known as a provocateur. Well, they told me I provoke people. I said, no, I'm a provocateur. It just sounds better. It's a French word. And it means, I'm going to tell you what it means. Right. A person who provokes trouble causes tension like an agitator. Okay. Now, let me, let me, let me work that. Jesus is a good provocateur. Matter of fact, he's the best provocateur that I know. He will often create tension and agitate us into understanding who he is. For those of you who have pearl earrings and pearl necklaces and pearl whatever, that pearl started as an agitator to the oyster. And the oyster will secrete uh, whatever that that chemical is that creates a pearl. I believe that the Lord agitates us, provokes us into understanding who he is. Uh, I believe that, that he agitates us into understanding that we're doing good, but we ain't done yet. All right. mm. It is sometimes in worship that you find out that you ain't all that in a bag of chips. Uh, it's sometimes in worship that our ego gets busted. Because you think you walk on, on air and on water. But in worship, God stirs up and agitates stuff in us to cause us to understand you, you're doing good. But you ain't all that yet. You're still under construction. And what's that song we say? Please be patient with me because God ain't through. He ain't through. You may think he's through. He ain't through. Just because we know how to sing hallelujah and hosanna don't mean that you're there yet. You're just beginning. Um, so Jesus is a provocateur. Let me add this that for my conjecture, nothing more than my educated guess. That Barabbas was an agitator. Okay, I'll pick that up in a minute. Think about that. So we come here with the understanding of singing Hosanna right. on this Sunday. Please don't move to the next phrase and say crucify him. Because if you move to that phrase, you miss the essence of the Hosanna. All right. mm. But I understand people are just finicky. Some people say fickle. I like finicky. A finicky person is a wishy-washy people. Finicky people are governed by their emotions. I feel good, I act good. I wake up on the wrong side of the bed, don't have a bad hair day no more, but just in case I used to, um, have bad hair day, and everybody and their mama know, because I'm finicky. I'm moved by emotions. I'm in contact with people on my job. Dr. Piper, you can't say nothing, because you come in contact with them too. And when you walk away, you say their name is their name is Legion. Because mm -hmm. they are many. You meet them today. Oh, they're so nice. You meet them on Monday, not as nice. And by Wednesday, they're the devil. 
on Sunday. Oh, they're so nice again. They are legions because there are many. But you can't tell them that because they might be your boss. <laughs> And here's the ice cream on a cake. And when they walk away from you, mm, we, let's move on. <laughs> is that what they think about you? Eh? Let me move. And, and so, so Jesus is a provocateur and he moves us and creates tension. Moments that would create us and agitate us into understanding who he is. Last week I preached about the wedding at Canaan. They ran out of wine. And here's the agitation. They had no wine. And Jesus says, what's that got to do with me? Oh, hold up. Hold up. I came to you, Jesus. <laughs> now you act like you don't know. You don't know your brother no more. <laughs> and then in that moments, he agitates and stores up moments or crea creates moments where we get to know him like no other. And here's the point. The servants... And Jesus, excuse me, the servants and the disciples are the only ones that came out of that wedding knowing who Jesus was. Ah, Jesus often comes to those that least suspected to show them, to interrupt their moments and to lead them to who he is. The shepherds are watching their flocks by night or sleeping on the ground. And the angels of the Lord came. <laughs> y'all remember that song? Uh, yeah, yeah. If y'all remember, go back to Sunday school. <laughs> it starts off with a shepherd making the announcement. And in John's gospel, he does it to the servant. He, they get to know who he is because he created a moment where they can see his divinity and understand his humanity. Let me, let me move to... And, and so he's a provocateur. He creates opportunity for us to get to know him better. And sadly, some of us miss these moments. Sometimes you create a moment that we are too much afraid to take the risk to get to the next level. Uh, we want great and expensive blessings. But Dietrich Bonhoeffer says we got to understand that we can't give him cheap grace. Uh, let me tell you how Dietrich, Dietrich Bonhoeffer describes cheap grace. And G Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a, a theologian during the, the uh, Second World War and was actually um, a Lutheran pastor that ended up in the concentration camp. But he wrote this about cheap grace. He said cheap grace is, is, cheap grace is the grace we bestow on ourselves. Cheap grace is the preaching of forgiveness without repentance, baptism without church discipline, communion without confession, cheap grace is grace without discipline, discipleship, grace without the cross, and grace without Jesus Christ. Wow. That's cheap grace. But when you understand that when you want these expensive and elaborate gifts, you got to give him your all, how can we give him what is not ours? Your worship ain't yours. It's his. You got to give it back to him. What's that old saying? Love ain't love until you give it away. Okay, let me move on. Because that's a whole different story today. Um, so he moves from the entrance. He comes as a provocateur. And then he comes to give us clarity in the midst of contradictions. Oh, that's good. Man, I got to give myself a, a high five for that one. He comes to give us clarity in the midst of contradictions. All right. Now, let's see. I got to work this one. Jesus loves us so much that he created a moment called Palm Sunday. And in his Palm Sunday, it brings us to a greater and a more intimate understanding of who he is. Palm Sunday creates moments of great clarity, strived and clothed in contradiction. There are times when we are clear of who Jesus is. While we are clear and we examine our reality, we see contradiction. Let me see if I can work this out. He comes into Jerusalem, as we said, a triumph entrance. Hosanna, clarity. 
riding on a donkey. Contradiction. I got to work this now. He comes riding on a donkey. The donkey is a contradiction. Because the donkey is not the, the animal for a king. If he came on a horse, a stallion, white or black, that fits the image of a king. But he comes riding on a donkey, a contradiction. May I suggest to you that this contradiction represents our human failure. Okay. I got your attention now. Yeah. See, before y'all was started creating your, your own canvas, right. y'all was painting by the numbers. Right. I interrupted your canvas painting, painting it with a twist right. to give you another canvas. Jesus is riding on a donkey and that donkey represents our human failure. Let me give you some of the characteristics of a donkey. A donkey has a reputation of being stubborn, <laughs> Due to his highly developed sense of self-preservation, he don't move unless it's in his best interest. <laughs> a donkey is a herd animal. Yeah. They like to herd together and cannot stand being alone because as a herd, they get strength in numbers. As a donkey, they don't like, they don't like to be kept by themselves. A single, a single donkey will be just as happy herding with the goats. Okay. Wow. All right. I got to let that set in. Mm -hmm. It seems there's a connection between a donkey and humanity. Just like a donkey, we are prone to have a strong self, a strong image of self-preservation. We call that stubbornness. We don't often do anything unless it's in our best interest. And whenever we have a problem with somebody, not just a pastor, with anybody, we will recruit others to come alongside us to share in our problem that we have with a person. And the other person do not know everything about the situation, but will take your side because you are good at convincing others of how good you are and how bad they are. Mm -hmm. Like the donkey. <laughs> we are clear in who we are, but we don't realize that donkey represents our human failure because sometimes we got to be willing to go where we don't want to go. We got to be willing to do what we don't want to do just because the Lord said it, but the stubbornness in us. Okay, get ready. Hey, this is going to put your foot twist. The stubbornness in us. Okay, God, here's a fleece. <laughs> if you want us to go, <laughs> let that fleece be wet. You come back in the morning. The fleece is <laughs> wet. Okay, God, if you want me to go, <laughs> let the fleece be dry. Right. You come back and the fleece is dry. Now, the question I have for you is, why you didn't go the first time? If you clear it was God. All right, all right. And you know God's voice. Right. The scripture said, and the sheep shall know my voice. And another they will not follow. Why do we fleece God? Because sometimes it's not in our best interest. So we think. Okay, I can't get one amen on that one. So the donkey represents our human failure. Let me go to my next point. We have to worship beyond function. Worship beyond function. Uh, so, again, not everybody understood who Jesus is. But what I loved about the text, everything in the text is moving. The donkey is moving. The people are waving. Jesus is moving. Nobody is stagnant in the text. Do you ever notice that? There's no idle by people. Just to, everybody's doing something. Not everybody gets understanding. They're all moving. Nobody's stagnant. They're worshiping. They're doing their thing. But even though nobody, everybody's moving, nobody's stagnant, uh, not everybody captured the essence of worship. Uh, not everyone has a full understanding that in worshiping the Lord comes freedom. Yeah. 
We sometimes think we worship the Lord because we want to manipulate him into doing what we want him to do. Because the scripture said he inhabits the praises of his people. So if I come to church and worship him as if he needs to be worshipped this way, I can strong arm him into doing what I want him to do. <sighs> but we need to understand that the worship is designed to set us free. I said before that this entrance of, of on Palm Sunday was designed to put a plan of salvation in place and to set the captives free. Hmm. But when you just go through the function of worship, not the essence of worship, you come out still captive. All right. Wow, 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 wow. That, 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 was, that, was, that, was, that was profound, wasn't it? Yeah. That's so profound. Nobody knew I was profound but one person. Um, if you understand that all we do is the function and not the essence, we get caught up in us and not him. Okay. So when we fully understand worship and worship should not be exhausting. It should not be weighty. It should be freeing. And if you get caught up in the function and not the essence, you walk out of there just tired and not better. Okay. I thought I was going to get two two amens in. Um, Thank you. (laughs) So if we just worship with knowledge and not with heart, we walk away feeling tired and not better. Uh, uh, So we may know the mechanics of worship, but not the heart of worship. Because the heart is invested in him and not in us. And the heart leads us into an intimacy and not self. Uh, So in worship, we get to a place of fulfillment. And the place of fulfillment is doing what the law says do, and you feel fulfilled and not with your agenda. All right, okay. So in worship, we are exposed to potential. The possibilities is in the name of the one who called us. So in worship, we get exposed to Jesus, and in Jesus, we find out our possibility, and from our possibility, we move into potential, and from our potential, we move into direction with the Lord. All All this comes from the encounter with him. This encounter is liberating and inspiring to trust in the one we call Hosanna. Okay, let me move on. So in worship, we develop a sense of trust and maturity to say yes when he tells us to go. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. It's in that place of maturity that we stop fleecing when we begin to understand the essence of worship. Uh, Okay, I'm going to move on. Because in this Palm Sunday, we need to understand that Jesus is met in worship. But here's a warning. Jesus was met in worship and they sing hallelujah, but this is not the Jesus that shed his blood. Okay, I let that sink in for a moment because that's critical. This Jesus who's met is a Jesus riding on a donkey, but not the one that shed the blood. What I mean by that? Oftentimes in worship, we want to emulate and get close to what we see. Do that with Jesus. But understand that the Jesus you encounter on Palm Sunday is not the crucified Jesus of resurrection. Why is that even significant? Because there's sometimes you you are introduced to Jesus on Palm Sunday and not the Jesus that shed his blood and that tells you you still got some work to do. Okay. This is the Jesus that's on a journey to his completion. And if you think you encounter Jesus on a, on a Palm Sunday and think you have arrived, you ain't arrived yet. You're just beginning. 
brothers and Jesus on Palm Sunday is the beginning of your journey. And you get to sing hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But understand it, he ain't shed his blood yet. You still got some work to do. You ain't finished yet. He's still knocking off some rough edges. He's still sanding down the paper. This is the Jesus that you encounter on a Palm Sunday. So don't walk out of here thinking that you encountered the, the resurrected Jesus. This is the Jesus that's still riding on the, the failure of our humanness to remind us that we ain't finished yet. Amen. This Palm Sunday, I'm going to close with this. Lord gave me this and I, I was preparing for my Wednesday message and the Lord said, what is emerging is the essence of what is to come. What you are becoming is not yet, but what you are to become is more like him. So out of this worship experience, what is emerging is greater than what is to become. So what you are right now, you're good. But what is emerging out of this worship experience is greater than you. Ah, let me, let me, I'm done. I'm really, I'm done. Get ready. Um, this August, maybe how many years? 30 what? See, I, I, she, she did five. She flunked the test. Oh, I forgot Pastor Jeff back there. He gonna leave, don't do my overseeing and everything. Praise him. Um, let me share this with you. We've been dating 37 years. Actually, I'm a 38. And I, brother, oh, you know what I found out the other day? Yesterday. Just yesterday. <laughs> I don't know if I asked you for your amen. Just yesterday. <laughs> Open my mouth and inserted foot. Mm -hmm. Yes. Figure that out. Not the bishop. She rolled her eyes. Digging as Lucy? I said, Ooh, I did something wrong. And when she rolled her eyes, I realized. That what is emerging is <laughs> not it, but it's yet to come. <laughs> and so I understand that this journey has gotten better, but it's not complete. Because what is emerging is not yet, but what is to come is greater than what has been. And I can only get to greater than what has been by keep working on what we have. Because I understand well, I met Jesus on the road to Jerusalem. I met Jesus on a Palm Sunday. I met Jesus with all my failure and in my humanness. I met Jesus on Palm Sunday riding on a donkey. I met Jesus and he was riding and not bleeding. I met Jesus and he caught me in my moments of failure and said to me, son, if you stick with me, I'll make you become greater than who you are now. I met Jesus in my humanity was introduced to his divinity. And when I saw his divinity, I saw my humanity. When I saw my humanity, I said, I'm not what I thought I was, but I'm going to get better by serving him. I met Jesus on a Palm Sunday, riding on a donkey that reminded me that I I'm not there yet, but if you stick with him and you keep moving with him and not get stagnant, he will become the divinity that he's designed to be. Hallelujah. Come on, clap for the Lord. Clap for Jesus. Thank you, God, for loving us, for coming on, riding on the donkey. Go on my God during this holy week let's continue to reflect what he's done for us how much he loves us thank you God 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the presence of the Lord. While we're getting ready to do the invitation for those who do not have a relationship with the Lord, I know where you're at. You can feel the presence of the Lord because the spirit of the Lord is here. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, just have your way as you minister to everyone who's watching and those who are sharing. The Lord loves you. He has greater for you. And as we walk with this um, in our relationship with him and loving him and reading his word and getting to know him better in any relationship the more time you spend with them the better you get to know them and we praise God right now so for those who are in the sanctuary and those who are there if you don't have a relationship with the Lord today is your day Holy Spirit be just begin to minister as we're talking Pete just begin to pray the Lord loves you and as we were talking, as he's entering and on next Sunday, he is going to already go to the cross for our sins, no matter what we've done. Sometimes we don't think we're valuable enough for um, God's love, for God's forgiveness. But I want to remind you today, God loves you no matter what you've done, no matter the choices you've done. Our decisions may not always have been great, but he loves us unconditionally. Thank you, God. We can turn our mindsets around, transform us into be people, men and women of God, young people. That will be a soldier for him, being fishers of men. Because we got a great commission. Once you get in this relationship, he wants you to make fishers of men. So we thank God. And that's you today. And you don't have that relationship. And you say, you know what? Overseer, I want to know God. I want that relationship. I want him to live inside of me. I don't want to just lip service, but I want heart service. So if that's you today and you're in the sanctuary, you just raise your hand. And we're going to pray for you. And if you are watching, just put in the chat, I want salvation. I need healing. I need prayer. I need to rededicate my life. Whatever that is, we have somebody who will be following up with you. You will not have to walk this journey alone. Sometimes we walk things by ourselves and we don't have to. I thank God for the Holy Spirit that leads and guides us, but he also gives people in our connections, in our past that can help walk with us, beside us, and say it's a church, as a church body. So Father God, we thank you. We thank you for those who said yes today. We thank you for those, God, that you are applying the heart, taking off the rough edges. We thank you that you are reclaiming the backslider. We thank you for our prodigal sons and daughters coming today from the north, south, and the east, and the west, God. We thank you for those who are just saying, yes, God, I want to be just be more faithful. I want to be just more committed. I want to worship you in the essence of the fullness of you, God, that I would decrease, that you may increase. Show yourself mighty and strong. So, God, we thank you for everyone who's tuned in. We thank you that just by your leading of the Holy Spirit, God, that your will has been accomplished, the word that needed be said has been sown on good ground and it shall bring forth um, plenty of a harvest God thank you for abundant harvest through this word and we give God praise and glory let all God's people say amen come on clap if you believe that if you receive that word on today thank you for those who gave your life to the Lord we praise God for you for those who have repented and said yes as we get ready to transition for the closing of the day just want to remind you a few things tonight at six o'clock PM. We have our young adults that will be sharing from the things that have been gone in the past and how they're shining, moving forward, how God has kept them. Tune in and let somebody know tonight at six o'clock on True Vine Facebook Live. Wednesday will be at New Creation. Thursday, we will be on Zoom. There will be a link for you to register um, so you can get on that. Bishop will be talking about worshiping through our pain and then friday we'll be having the seven last saints here in the sanctuary so at 6 30 amen we are combining with other churches university presbyterian other churches and just having a time of oneness knowing that god is the god we serve yes Amen. I'm so excited for what we're doing and that we have opportunity to gather again. Next Sunday is Easter. If you did not bring your Easter eggs and your candy today, well, next Sunday when you bring them, already have them filled because they'll be filling them this week. Please already have them filled. And um, oh, you can bring them Friday because we'll be in service on Friday. So you have opportunity. And then in some of those eggs, put a dollar, five or ten in because we like to give little prizes for those who are, um, find the eggs. Thank you again. Your, com your coming has matched. Praise God. Amen.
time to the Lord's time. 